Read John 15, 26. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will also testify about me. So Jesus will send the comforter from the Father. So no, again, God is the Father and Jesus sends the comforter. Yeah, so none the of which, yeah, I will send, none of which Islam believes. Islam does not believe God is the Father, let alone the Father of Jesus. And if you say, like some Muslims, or not you, that this is the comforter, you just prove Jesus is Muhammad's God because Jesus sends the comforter. But if Muhammad is the comforter and Allah sent him, but Jesus sends the comforter, that means Jesus is the God who sent Muhammad. So aren't you worshiping Jesus as your Allah? <laughs> Very slick. The one where it says, "Eat the book will be given to him." Isaiah twenty nine twelve, right? Go to Isaiah twenty nine twelve. Then the book is delivered to the one who is illiterate, saying, "Read this, please." And he will. And he says, "I am not literate." See, that's Muhammad, brother, brother, Allah Akbar, prophecy of Nabi Karim, Allah Akbar. All right, so this is the prophecy, right? Yes. Okay, now can you read verse eleven for me? The whole vision has become to you like the word words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one who is literate saying read this please and he says i cannot read for okay. it is sealed okay so now you have a person saying i can't read this book it's sealed so now in verse 12 it says that the people are also likened to someone who's given a book but he's illiterate and he can't read it and he says i can't read if that's muhammad then who is the other prophet in verse 11 the one who can read but the book is sealed and he can't read it because it can't be opened so how many prophets are coming according to their logic so, um, so far too um, so now muhammad is one who's the other then where's that prophet that came and saying hey uh this book is sealed i can't read it uh, i'm not sure because it doesn't exist because it's not a prophecy of a prophet that's the point read 11 one more time the whole vision has become to you like the word notice of book the vision listen to it the visions become to you israel like a man who's given a book that's sealed and he can't read it, like a man who's illiterate and can't read. It's likening Israel to a person who's illiterate, dumb, or a person that can't have access to the book because it's sealed up. And you took that as a prophecy of Muhammad. But since you're in the book of Isaiah, you agree that if you're going to quote a, a Bible book, that the prophet to come will have to agree with the theology of the book, right? I mean, here, Isaiah is a prophet. He's not going to prophesy the coming of a prophet that contradicts his theology, right? Oh, well, we shouldn't know. Okay. Now go to Isaiah 63, 16. Doubtless you are our father through Abraham. Though Abraham was ignorant of us and Israel does not acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from everlasting is your, is your name. So is Muhammad's God Allah a father to his people? No, he isn't. But Isaiah says... Yahweh, the true God, Jehovah, is our father. So now you're going to convince me that Isaiah prophesied a prophet who says his God is a father to no one, whereas Isaiah's God is a spiritual father to his people and he has spiritual children. How does that work? Go to Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the you are our potter and all and all we are the work of your hand. So again, you are our father who made us, who created us and saves us. So you are a spiritual father. We are your spiritual children. How do you want me to believe that Isaiah is going to prophesy a man who says Allah is a father to no one. We're only his slaves. He's our master. When Isaiah's God is a spiritual father who has spiritual children that he begets spiritually, not sexually. And you're trying to convince me Isaiah prophesied that man. Yeah, that makes sense. Go to Isaiah 10. When you get there, read 20 to 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, the, to the mighty God. Okay, so the remnant will return to the mighty God. Who's the mighty God there? The true God, the Lord, Jehovah, right? Yes. Now, an Israelite cannot have more than one true God. How many mighty gods are there for Isaiah? One God. One God, right? So there's only one mighty God? Yes. Can I read Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So a child is born. Wait, wait, before you go on. A child is born who's the mighty God? Yes. But you just admit, for Isaiah, there's only one mighty God. That's the true God, the Lord Jehovah. 
So you're saying Isaiah the prophet says the true God will be born as a baby, a child, a human baby? Um, yes. And this agrees with Muhammad and the Quran? No, it does not. Now, but keep reading to seven because I'm going to show you how the Jews interpret Isaiah 9. I'm going to give you the link in a minute. But now keep reading to seven. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay, now I just gave them, and I'm going to give you a link to the English translation of the Aramaic paraphrase of Isaiah 9. A group of Jews, not Christians, the early centuries, around the time of Christ, translated the Hebrew Testament into Aramaic. They're not Christians, and they translate Aramaic. It's called the Targum of Jonathan. Go to pages 30 to 31. Now I'm going to read who this child is according to the Jews, not Christians. The prophet said to the house of David, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he has taken the law upon himself to keep it. His name is called from eternity, wonderful, the mighty God who liveth to eternity, the Messiah. This child is called wonderful, the mighty God who lives forever, the Messiah, whose peace shall be great upon us in his days. So even the Jews interpret this prophecy as about Messiah, Mashiach, Arabic, El Messiah, and saying that it's the Messiah who's the mighty God that lives forever and sits on David's throne. It's there in front of your eyes. I didn't make this up. This is the Aramaic paraphrase of the Old Testament translated in English. So even the Jews confirm this is about Messiah. And yet Muhammad said Jesus is the Messiah. But the Messiah for Isaiah is the mighty God being born as a baby, becoming a child, being human, the God-man. And this is in Isaiah over 700 years before the birth of Jesus. The Jews said it's about the Messiah. The New Testament says Jesus Messiah. And Muhammad said Jesus is the Messiah. We just buried Muhammad to the pit of hell. And this is the book you want to quote to convince me Isaiah prophesied Muhammad, who contradicts all that Isaiah taught. 